Hey guys, Zal here, and today I want to talk about every single class I took to get a chemistry major in 2022. Now there are quite a few classes here, and the chemistry major also requires a couple of prerequisite classes that aren't actually within the major. I'm going to cover those all here today. I am not going to cover my general education requirements. They vary wildly based on the school you go to. And of course, I don't think you guys are as interested in a very long video with me covering what history classes I took. So I'm just gonna focus on kind of the STEM stuff, my chem classes, whatever prereqs, and any like chemistry type electives I took. Now to get us started here, in freshman year, I started off only taking my one chemistry class that is General Chemistry 1. General Chemistry 1 is a pretty basic class. It covers like what you would take in a high school chemistry class, but maybe a bit more in depth and a bit quicker. Alongside that, I actually took chem general chemistry one lab. This is a single credit lab class I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. This was really covering the basics of a chemistry lab, you know, kind of basic like significant figures, general lab safety, how to use a beaker, very boring lab. You're not going to be doing a lot of actual chemistry in it. Now, my second semester, again, I only took the one chemistry class. I took general chemistry two, and I also took the general chemistry two lab. General chemistry two is a lot more focused of a class. You go over stuff like PKAs, and you build over on top of like stuff you learn through the whole semester. It's a lot more interesting, still a relatively basic class and really getting into the terminology of chemistry, but it's a pretty basic, pretty easy class. You're basically only gonna do memorization and algebra. Gen Chem 2 lab is very similar to Gen Chem 1 lab. A lot of lab basics, titrations, figuring out the molecular weight of an unknown compound, stuff like that. Honestly, pretty boring for your first year as a chemistry major. A lot of people take this time to take any prerequisites they need to for the major. Now, moving on into my sophomore year, the summer before that, I actually went ahead and took my Organic Chemistry 1 class during the summer. I don't recommend it for everyone because Organic Chemistry 1 is a super tough class and you're basically condensing it into half the normal time, but I had a lot of fun with it. I really loved Organic Chemistry 1 and being able to take it over the summer mean, meant I only had to focus on that one class. Class. Organic chemistry one is kind of getting into real chemistry. I mean, all chemistry is real chemistry, but gen chem is super basic, a lot of unit conversions, and organic chemistry one, you're getting into real chemical structures and like how this stuff interacts and these chemical reactions and nomenclature for these chemical compounds. I really enjoyed it. Alongside this, I took the general chemistry one lab where you're going to learn a lot of organic chemistry techniques like distillations, separatory funnels, recrystallization, some chromatography, stuff like that. It sort of starts to feel like you're doing real chemistry in your organic chemistry one labs. After this, into my fall semester, I took organic chemistry two, and organic chemistry two is a lot similar to organic chemistry one, but you're going a lot more in depth, and you're going to learn a lot more reactions and a lot less of the basic nomenclature. These reactions are usually a lot more complex and have a lot more complex reaction mechanisms. And really, if you liked organic chemistry one, you're probably gonna like organic chemistry two. A lot of people even like organic chemistry two more because they like learning about these more complex reactions. But that said, organic chemistry two is a lot of fun. It can be a bit more difficult depending, but I had a lot of fun with organic organic chemistry too. I also took at the same time more my organic chemistry two lab, which is the most fun I had had in a chemistry lab up to that point. You do actual chemical syntheses. A really common one that you synthesize is aspirin. I know they do that in a lot of organic chemistry labs. That's a lot of fun. You get to do like actual synthetic chemistry and organic chemistry once you get to OCHEM two lab. So I highly recommend that. Now, after that, I didn't take one of like the core chem classes going into spring semester. I took biochemistry because I'd already taken my other O-chem class over the summer. Biochemistry, 
I had a weird experience with because I didn't necessarily enjoy the professor I had. And it was also the start of when like COVID completely shut down schools. And so that was pretty, pretty weird of an experience. But if you're interested in the biological side of chemistry or medicinal pharmaceuticals, or you're going into med school, um, biochemistry is invaluable. You learn a lot of like complex biological stuff. You learn all these different pathways, how they work chemically. You learn about the structures of amino acids and how drugs interact in the body on a chemical level. And that can be really, really fun. One thing I really didn't like about biochemistry is they have a completely different nomenclature system for how stuff works in their biochemical systems than normal chemistry. And it's pretty annoying relearning your nomenclature after you just took your organic chemistry classes. One thing I also took sophomore year is my first of my non-chemistry prerequisites. I took my Calculus 1 in the fall and Calc 2 in the spring. Calculus 1 is basic, like if you took calculus in high school, you know all about Calc 1. It is your basic limits and derivatives. And Calculus 2 is your integrals and series. You really need to pay attention in these. They're very important for your upper level chem classes that you're going to take your senior or junior year in chemistry. Now, I also ended up taking some other classes over the summer. Following this, I took my physics classes, which you need for your PCHEM classes. And this started off with Physics 1, where if you took physics in high school, it's going to be pretty similar. Normally, you're going to have to take calculus-based physics in college, and it might be a bit more difficult, a bit more fast-paced, but it's pretty similar to what you learned in high school, and I found it pretty easy. This is your, like, normal kinematic motion, stuff like that for your physics one. Going into your physics two, which is a lot more relevant to what you're going to be doing in your chemistry major, you're going to be learning about your electromagnetism and, you know, electricity, stuff like that, which is very important. Again, it's a relatively easy class. Along with those, I had to take Physics 1 Lab, which is such a basic boring lab. It's probably the most boring lab I took. Think like shining lasers through a prism for these physics labs, or just like using a spring, tossing a ball. It's very boring. Um, the Physics 2 Lab pretty similar. You're going to be doing a bit of light refraction with prisms, a bit of electromagnetism. I found it really boring, really basic science stuff. Um, and after that, I also took uh, some of my chemistry electives. I took organic synthesis, which was an awesome class. This is an advanced version of organic chemistry. It was like this 400 level class that a bit of master's students also took. You're going to learn about like actual synthetic organic chemistry, what you would be doing on the job. You're going to be learning how to make these synthetic organic pathways and how it all works, how you make these molecules, these complex chiral molecules and medications. I had a great time taking this class. I learned so the most I've learned in a chem chemistry class and been the most challenged. The exams weren't like normal chemistry exams you'd be given this complex chiral molecule and you have to create your own synthetic pathway on how to make it. You'd learn all about these chiral catalysts and how to make these certain chiral molecules. I had a lot of fun. If you have a synthetic organic chemistry class at your college, I highly recommend it. And I also took uh, my instrumental analysis class and this instrumental analysis class is basically your analytical chemistry. You're going to learn about all your instrumentation, how it all works, and how to actually interpret the data you get from this these chemical instruments. This is like the fundamentals of chemistry. None of the other chemistry like kind of subgroups would be able to do any work without the instrumental analysis and analytical chemistry. You learn how to interpret all this data alongside it. I took my instrumental analysis lab. This lab, you actually work with the instrumentation and get the raw data and interpret it yourself. So this is invaluable for any chemistry job. You need to know how to use this instrumentation, how to actually use your data. So pay attention in that class. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed my professor for it. And after taking this class, I also took 
my inorganic chemistry class. Inorganic chemistry is a lot of fun. It's super spatially based with a lot of your stuff in group theory and crystal structures of these different molecules, but I really like material science. Highly recommend inorganic chemistry. Um, I also at the same time took a couple of other electives. These weren't necessarily chemistry electives, they were material science electives, but I took mechanics of materials, which was a lot of fun. Not really a chemistry-based class, an engineering class more so. And I also took engineering design, but this both kind of fit into my chemistry interests of material science. Now, after all these classes, I go into physical chemistry one. Physical chemistry one at my school was the quantum mechanics semester. I really thought quantum mechanics was super interesting, but Mind you, this is a math class disguised as a chemistry class and can be a lot of people's nightmares. I know a lot of places don't require multivariable calculus. They only strongly recommend it, but this is the class where you're going to be using it. I personally didn't have room in my schedule to take multivariable calculus, so I kind of taught it to myself a bit over the summer. And there are a whole ton of online resources for teaching yourself calculus, so don't worry if you don't have the time to take it and it's not a requirement. You can definitely go and do like a lot of online resources with YouTube videos, etc. But with this PCHEM 1 class, quantum mechanics, super interesting. It's really like the fundamentals of how all this chemistry works. It is at an intersection of chemistry, math, and physics. So if you really enjoy that, you'll love this class. And then after that, physical chemistry 2. Physical chemistry 2 is for my school is the thermodynamics and statistical mechanics semester of physical chemistry at a lot of schools those are swapped but my school took that after my quantum mechanics semester i thought this was a lot less interesting than quantum mechanics my favorite part about pchem 2 was the stat mech part which is kind of the intersection between macro scale chemistry and the quantum scale chemistry and alongside that class i took physical chemistry lab Physical Chemistry Lab is a combination of both lab experiments from PCHEM quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics, but I had a lot of fun with it. This was one of my favorite labs. It's crazy what sort of quantum mechanical experiments you can do and getting this raw data of like light emissions from a machine and how you can actually turn that into like a map of the energy levels of a molecule. And I think that's absolutely awesome to learn about. Alongside this, I took another chemistry elective. I took advanced inorganic chemistry. Advanced inorganic chemistry was a lot of fun. It delves more into the inorganic chemistry stuff. I learned a lot about inorganic catalysts and kind of how it combines with organic chemistry and a bit more about chemistry like materials chemistry and these crystal structures and also some green chemistry. I really enjoyed that. It's a it was a master's level class, a very small group of people in a seminar, and it was one of the most fun chemistry experiences I had, just being able to go in every morning and learn in this really small group setting about very advanced topics in chemistry and just reading these advanced chemistry papers. And alongside this, I actually did research as well for credit, which a lot of chemistry majors either want or require. I didn't actually do my research within the chemistry department though, I did it in our material science engineering applied science department, which kind of was at an intersection of chemistry, physics, and biology, which is why I really loved it because I'm interested in all sorts of fields within science. And that was a lot of fun. I totally recommend getting into research. You can both get credit for it, but it also shows you what it's like to work in an actual lab, which is what you're going to be doing in industry and you need to know that. So get into a lab as soon as you can. And with that, that is every single class I needed to take to get a chemistry major in 2022. A lot of people might have slightly different chemistry major requirements. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. If not, and you're just maybe a freshman or senior in high school who wanted to know a bit what your workload's gonna be like in the chemistry major, that's that right there. And remember, you can always take these summer classes. Throughout my major, I took summer classes to take the workload off myself during the semester. Because during the semester, you're going to be doing extracurriculars and have your gen ed requirements. And you're going to have a lot less focus than you can over the summer. So that's kind of my workload for the chemistry major. Every class I need to take, 
I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and I'll see you next time.